little, a little people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a gain of the, the community involved. Uh, you know, we we all about the community, man. You know what I mean. So, which which leads me off, man. Welcome back. It's your boy Trees Trim signing on screen. And go get the money. Go get it. Go get it. It's the Hot Seat Podcast where we're always putting a spotlight on entrepreneurs, um, small business owners, black-owned businesses, artists, musicians, uh, and athletes in our community. With that being said, today we got an extravagant guest that I'm extremely excited to introduce right now. You know what I mean? So in the building, we got that Subway Bomber, Mural Painting. Celebrity tattooing, <laughs> graphic designing, cowboy hat wearing, <laughs> international traveling, son of a gun, hey. the one, men so one, man. Appreciate Welcome to you, the man. hot seat, brother. Boy. Woo! And then I'm a. Hey, hey. that's crazy, crazy. <laughs> that was so dope. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Right there. My guy. That's exactly Yo, how I man. Welcome to the hot seat, bro. Man, that's so dope. That's so dope. I'm glad you did that. That was yes, a little sir. special touch. You know, the first time I met Tree, and that's exactly what I was doing in the tattoo shop. You know, I was young, thriving artist. He walked in. They were like, yo, man, so you're up. You know, she was about to get a tattoo, and I was listening to Lil Wayne, Birdman, at the time, Fireman, and, you know, I, I, don't. I saw him, and I caught his vibe, and I was like, let me show this guy a good time, you know, and give him my energy. So I immediately started throwing money up in the air, and, like, <laughs> have, you know, because it was kind of a party that day. It might have been a special event. I think it was, um, Friday, it the was uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. It was. So it was already a crazy day that yeah. day, so, and, um, you know, I always vibe with anyone that, you know, I see come in that got some swag, you know, he was looking fresh that day. And uh, yeah, you know, I wanted to let him know who I was. And, you know, I think ever since then, we left a lasting impression on ourselves because I saw the way he carried himself. And I like to inspire people. And I could tell that he kind of got a little bit of the flame that I had that day on the fireman. And uh, man, yeah, it's cool to see where he's come to, you know, this far. I've been keeping a little close eye on him on Instagram and um, throughout his life and, you know, doing all the barbering and his, um, you know, he's real smooth with it when he's doing his podcasts. And I was, I wanted it to happen naturally because I was in the back of my head. I was like, man, I got to do a show with this guy, you know? Yeah, man, I've been facing <laughs> him down, dog. But I've been facing him cool, so, Yeah, I kept it cool. Man, that's the way I like, um, you know, projects and collaborations to happen. I like them to happen naturally. I think that's when you get the best um, product and documentation from it. So... Yeah, I'm here now. You know, we happen to cross each other's paths again after so so long. I mean, I'm talking about years. Um, you know, a decade has gone by, to, and we we watch each other grow, and we're here to share my story, his story. We're cut from the same cloth. We're only from a few towns over. We're about the same age. Um, you know, we've suffered the same trials and tribulations. We were inspired by all the great music and trends and the uh, Southern California lifestyles, and uh, you know we. This is what we we're here to do, and we're just getting started. So, welcome to the Hot Seat Podcast. <laughs> hey, this is my new co-host. Actually, <laughs> hey, you like, know what, bro? Wait, I don't think I, I don't think they understand what just happened. Wait, I don't even know if I understand, bro. Like, what? Thank you, hey, man. This happens, man. Naturally, I, I appreciate the right. kind words, yeah, man. So, man, you know, respect. the love is always reciprocated here. You know what it is, man, and I really appreciate you. Man, I'm having a good time. Thank you. Being here. Thank you. I know you Thank are busy. You know, you got that. you on the grind just like me. You've got a lot of things going on in your life. And taking the time to sit down and sit with me and, and talk, chop it up, it really means a lot to me and our team at the hot seat, man. So big man, salute to you, you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because yeah. you know what? Like I you know, I told I told you earlier, man. It's the hot seat, so I gotta have a hot guest, the hot topics, Ooh. and the hot spots oh, to be at. Yeah, that's tight. So I like that. I mean, with that being said, <clears throat> some people have been kind of like acting like my 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 guest ain't been hot enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm you gotta just, pull I'm, something you know, out. Huh? Look, look what we're doing now. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you I, gotta I, let... I greatly appreciate you being here, man. Everything um, takes a little bit. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever been on? You know, have ever seen any episode of the hot seat? It usually starts Man. with this question right here. You know, um, who are you? So, 
I mean, I feel like you really gave them some game. But let's start off, you know, tell them just a little bit about your background. You're from Escondido. Tell us how it was growing up um, and your transition just from the start. Because we, I, I'm getting, I'm, I'm digging deep, man. I did my research. I'm like Shannon Sharp right now. I got my cue cards. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's start there. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate you having me. You know, I consider you family from this day forth and since the day I met you. So I think it's um, important for me to share my story a lot of times just because uh, it might inspire someone that's gone through it and been through it. So as far as who I am, I'm, um, you know, I'm originally from Escondido, California, a small town that had a lot of culture. And I, I soaked it all up as a kid. Um, the lifestyle was like leading towards being in um, gangs and um, things of that nature, you know. Um, as far as like the Mexican and Latino culture back then, I was really um, looking up to my older cousins and stuff that were going in that direction as well. You know, there was a real beautiful side to it. It wasn't really all about drugs and violence. There was some beauty to it. The music was something that really grabbed a hold of me. You know, the oldies and the classics of that nature. And then also along with the gangster rap. Yeah. And then the style and the look and mm -hmm. the aesthetic of it all. Um, I just was, I fell in love with it. And I, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. And, um, you know... <clears throat> If I can look back at it now, um, you know, I'm glad that I didn't go in that direction because now when I look up some of my friends I, I was going to school with at that time and in middle school, they're all either dead or in jail or, or um, you know, they have a dead end job or stuck with a crazy, you know, baby mama drama. So my dad at the time, he, he got a, um, a house up here in Temecula when I was in Escondido and uh, he got custody of us and he brought us to... Temecula as young uh, as youngsters to get away from the violence and the drugs and the the crime that was going on in the neighborhood and the the dreams that I had you know yeah, yeah. No, no father wants to see his son grow up to be a gangster because it'll be a dead end road so um, yeah I was grateful for the opportunity that I didn't realize that at the time that I was having how old were you how Just old was I um, it was seventh grade so yeah. I must have been um, what oh uh, so like thirteen. 12, 13 years yeah, old? Yeah, I was like 12, 13, yeah. Oh, yeah, those are influential years. Too. Yeah, so sixth grade, I showed up to school, and um, the girl next to me, she was um, the, the younger sister of the head of the gang, of the West Side Gang, and um, she was there sitting next to me the first period, and Brian Early, 8 a.m. I just remember her binder was covered in graffiti art that her brothers had done on, on it, and, um, you know, it was all their hit-ups and all their nicknames and Bam Bam and Pebbles. And and um, so I, I just was infatuated with this. So I actually took it from her during the class and I copied all the lettering <laughs> off of it. And by the next thing you know, I just kept drawing that lettering over and over again. I gave myself a nickname. Um, everyone had a nickname, you know, Wero, Nyonyo, you know, mm -hmm. all these funny ones, Payaso, and you can go down the line. So I had to give myself one. And um, I picked a little rascal, little rascal, you know, and I, I would practice the lettering and make it like look like the Dogtown lettering, you know, where it's like the straight stuff. And um, yeah, I so started, that's your original. That's your original. Um, that's my original um, um, name that I was gonna pick as a as a, a gang, if I was ever in a gang. Oh, okay, like, okay. Because I was a wannabe at the yeah. time, you know, yeah. wannabe. Everyone goes through that stage of wannabe. There's like three stages. You're a wannabe, and then you're from like the the gang that's right below the major gang, which is usually one of the streets. So there was eight streets. Your dad came and swooped you up right in yeah. a good time. Yeah, yeah, he did. I think at twelve or thirteen, you really, you know, are kind of at that point. You know, even before then, yeah. you're already soaking up the game, like you said. Yeah. Um, it's weird because like for me, I was in. I was born in Virginia, but 11 months later, I was already in Cali, right? So from from 11 months till I was nine, about to turn 10, I was in Cali. So by that time, I'm already like, yo, I want some Dickies. I want yeah. some Cortez. I want this. I want that. And it's like, your parents is only going to let you go so far. My yeah. mom's from San Diego. Okay. My dad's from Chicago. Okay. My mom can recognize these things. Yeah. Like, Oh, yeah, he's trying to be like this, that, that. Yeah, yeah. And just like you, 
I got removed from that situation and I, I moved to Virginia. And I won't say that it was like moving to Temecula at, by any means. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was different. But it was a different culture. Right. And it changed me from, yeah. oh, less of the Dickies and the Cortez and all that stuff. Now I'm like, yo, let me throw some Tim's on. <laughs> yeah. Let me throw this. But I'm yep. still yes, influenced yes. like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's good that we kind of straight away from that direction because like you said it, it's a dead end to it it ended up you dead know? end yeah it's a dead literally end. yeah because i did play baseball with some kids at the time and um yeah i tried looking back look look them back up you know find them on facebook or something like that yeah and, you know my homie juan you know changed his name to spider and he had gotten stabbed um you know and passed away you know what i mean right, i was right. like dang like me and him were pitchers in the like, same team on the same yeah i'm like right. dang you know and then my other homie you know i tried to look him up and um you know he was locked up you know up north for something and he's gonna be away for a while yeah. the other homie i run into when i go down there and visit my mom because she still lives there he'll be like you know literally at a dead-end job and you know he'll be talking about you know, he's just, he's going through some troubles and if I could spot him right there yeah. or something, you know, I'm like, dang, yeah. this sucks, you know, or they're all strung out on, on, on some kind of drug and man, yeah, it's, as much as I would have loved to have lived there throughout those years, I'm glad that um, it took me away, you know, even though that stuff could still linger around in any kind of culture or race. Um, so yeah, the, the point of that story was to explain that I, I picked up the, um, so my God-given talent was art because my dad was an artist. But when he had me at uh, 18 and I was born, he strayed away from that, that, um, that hobby and love that he had for drawing. Mm -hmm. He used to do um, you know, black and gray photos uh, with pencil and stuff, sketches of me as a baby. And he used to draw like Weenie the Pooh and like Mickey Mouse and like all the, all the characters like really good. Like he yeah. was a cartoonist Queen, good. Yeah. And I was like, dang, this is crazy. So I used to always copy his art. At a younger age, I'm talking about when, when you were when you, when you first start um, learning how to draw, you know, through first and fifth grade, and then by so sixth that's grade, where your that's first, where your kind of inspiration yeah, for art for art in general, yeah, from your dad, yeah, my dad, and um, <clears throat> so through like first and fifth grade, I I drew all the time, you know, just drawing, 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 and uh, when I started to get into sixth seventh grade, that's when I wanted to like you know lead towards the gang stuff, yeah, so their art. Um, you know, they're, they're, the way I, I, I communicated with them is through, through doing the graffiti for them and the, the gang dialect, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, even though I wasn't part of the gang, I would still go in the alleys and like hit up the gang as if I was in it already because I was a wannabe and I wanted yeah. to get up our neighborhood because I was proud of the neighborhood, you know? Yeah. So I would do West Side Gang would be WSG or and I would just do ESCO. You know what's crazy about that though? Like, you know, man, it's like there's so many levels to the whole gang thing, yeah. right? Because, okay, obviously, Reptables. Those are the ones that's yeah. well known, putting in work, all this different stuff. But it's like even somebody like you that's hitting up these things and all that stuff yeah. to a certain respect you're guilty by association yeah. or you're affiliated in some sense you yeah. know what I mean but I get it when you say the one yeah. he's like yeah, I'm not really trying to kill nobody <laughs> yeah but yeah I will I was too young yeah. yeah yeah you know what I'm saying so, yeah I fell in love with the spray can um you know you could barely find it back then you'd have to go into like random people's garages or find some in the tool shed mm -hmm. it usually was black red or blue or green that you would find and um yeah I would and or gold and um you know that one was uh, all the the colors that i could only get my hands on because i wasn't old enough to buy paint so i'd have right. to come up on it somehow and also just tagging it on telephone like booths or like so that's where i was headed to my dad realizes it he sees me right there with slick back with the three flower hairs creased up you know pants with the with the nike cortezes on yeah. his kids calling himself little rascal yeah. he knows where his cousins are they're already jacking cars and stuff yeah. so he's like oh i need to snatch my kids and uh, move him away from where you know it's pretty much um the be next town over that was like less that was cleaned up yeah it was and less newer. crime and stuff and uh, so you get to temecula right or you, yeah. yeah now you're in temecula right yeah. this is like what, what seventh year? grade um probably like 96 90, 96 like, something like that somewhere between okay, 93 and 96 that was big yeah like it was nothing nothing that. here yeah it was just like a you know, I had no idea about <laughs> Temecula. I didn't know Temecula either. I didn't even know that. I right? didn't know anything over IE or San Diego. I mean, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the uh, the south of like Riverside and like all those little areas. Okay. You know? 
All I knew was San Diego to like Escondido, right. Oceanside, right, right, to right, San Marcos. Right. Uh, but that was all I knew besides going straight to L.A. Because I grew up a lot going to L.A. Um, my family always had something to do up there. We had, we had family up there. We might have lived up there for a little bit too as a youngster. But we were always in Los Angeles. But I never was in Riverside or San Bernardino or anything I yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I didn't even know I, Corona. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know any of that stuff being at all. Society, I didn't know that. I, I know I know it very well, but... So, so at first, at first, sent out here like, and now you're now you're going to school like, you're you're like you said you got the three flowers you know what I'm saying you creased up you you know you're hitting stuff up you kind of feeling like you're yeah adapting to this culture that and and you're loving it you know you're influenced that's what man you're saying, it was so right? it was so then you so get dope. out here yeah and then what happens like how does that feel what, what was yeah. that a culture shock what so yeah I mean it, that's what was crazy so. I, w I want to mention that the art was like the universal language from like each um, era or time or thing, um, you know, thing that I was going through. So like at first when I was um, first through fifth grade, I, I was drawing like cartoon style stuff. And then sixth and seventh grade, I started to get into the gang member stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I, when I went to eighth grade up here and going into high school, since I have ended up, you know, in the melting pot of like, <clears throat> a lot of um, people who um, were white and they liked punk rock and they liked BMXing, they liked skateboarding, yeah. they were the surfing, snowboarding. So that's what the the shock that I got when introduced to was all that stuff. But the punk rock scene, the skateboarders, the BMX scene, they all needed art in some way too. You know, they needed their their pads or their helmet or their, you know, whatever whatever stuff they had. To, you know, their skateboards, um, their album covers for the, or their skate ramps. Like everything needed some kind of tag or graffiti on it as well. You know, yeah. whether it was something that they've branded or if it was just something that we would put on there, like no effects or something. You know, and that's how I ended up. Um, you know, having that for like the good two years is also is having that culture shock because it was the um you know the california um also another bit huge california lifestyle that just i wasn't exposed to and now that's the way like i had to like you know manage to and kind of ride the, through those oceans of people like uh <clears throat> introducing to me to all that stuff and i fell in love with it you know i had those no effects cds and yeah. you know i had the skateboard and i was trying to go out and ride the bmx and build the bmx tracks and so you just so, exposed to more it, it exposed yeah. to a lot more things. yeah yeah i'm not gonna lie I, I, I got out here a lot later being in temecula menifee whatever and it's more built up and the more you know but the um the what, what, what would you call it uh the brand out here like as far as what people are on the bmx and yeah the 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 snowboarding uh going to the wineries doing different things all this different it, it just exposes you to more different things yeah you know what i mean so i i could get it at a at an early age that it would be it's actually cool because it's like our parents wasn't taking us to i had a bmx bike yeah but i wasn't doing bmx like x games type yeah, yeah. things with it you know what i'm saying right. i had a skateboard <laughs> but i wasn't doing you know yeah. what i'm saying no yeah i mean you we know, just use so, those things to get around like yeah. get some jumps you know try to do some all yeah. some stairs but it wasn't so you know it was like cool, though, it was like at one point you're like yeah i want to be a professional skateboarder or a professional yeah. bmx or i want to start my own punk band but i mean you know how that is that's wait, wait, those are those are diamond asked, dozen are, th are these things that you were when you were growing up like what was the thing okay outside of obviously we all wanted to be gangster at a certain point in our lives yeah anything i did i always wanted to be it like the most at the <laughs> fullest you know yeah i played so, baseball like i played it very well okay. i threw no hitters um you know i was a really amazing pitcher so i wanted pitcher? to be i wanted to be um a, a pitcher when i was um little league you know right before high school yeah um because when i got to high school i, I didn't get along with the jocks because it was a whole different lifestyle at that point that's why i ended up hanging out with all the not the necessarily the troublemakers but the yeah. um the multiracial kids you know what i mean i was hanging out with the black kids and puerto rican kids the mexican kids latino kids uh, the white kids who thought they were either black or mexican yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, so yeah. we were up we, we that's when the transition from like bmx skateboarding punk rock turned into the extreme love and, and um like utmost like respect for the hip-hop culture okay because i had 
Because Temecula, also the kids that were born and raised there, were their own their own lane, right? But then also since it was the melting pot, like how my dad brought us from there, yeah. And there was all these families coming from San Diego, San Francisco, San Diego, New Jersey, New yeah. York, uh, Miami. They were bringing their children to this town that they opened up the newspaper one day that said it was the top five, you know, locations to raise your family in because yeah. of the new schools, the less crimes, right? The affordable housing, you name it. You know, if you're someone like a father, yeah. uh, at that time would want to. Based exactly family what, better that's like exactly that's like what they why said. they exactly how they sold to my parents yeah back in the early <laughs> 2000s my parents was like my dad was about to retire from the military like yeah. in 07 yeah and and you know um before like before he retired like shortly before that maybe years before that i'll say that early 2000s before 2007 he was like yo you gotta everybody was going from oceanside to Temecula, yeah, then, like you get more bang for your buck. Yeah, you, exactly. You can build your house from the ground up. Mm -hmm. You get it for this, whatever. Those same houses is like seven hundred thousand now. Yeah, it was a hundred. I mean? got, they got then. on it like yeah. early. And shout out to our parents for like trying to create, a yeah. new, you know, a better yeah. environment for us, and yeah. you know, put us in a better situation yeah. to to thrive. You know, not man, just for sure. And at the time, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely shout out to them for that. Because at the time, I had no idea. I was clueless, you know what I mean? I was young, dumb, and blind. Like, mm -hmm. I had no idea what was going on. So I looked at it like I was rebellious, you know? I was like, man, F this place. You know, this place is whack. You know, yeah. I don't want to even, like, I'm not proud of this place. Like, I was about the streets exactly. back home, right? Yeah. I was like, I don't even want to know. People know I live in this, in this <laughs> yeah. place, you yeah, know? Yeah, I don't even want to Yeah, that. yeah. I'm from Escondido. <laughs> I'm from San Diego, man. Yeah. Six one nine yeah. seven six oh like yeah. i don't know about this and then so that's what caused me to um well backtrack so first it was like the younger kid drawing you know yeah and then at, from the first grade to fifth grade and then sixth and seventh there was like the gangster stuff affiliation you know and then um seventh and eighth was the um the bma skateboarding mm -hmm. transition kind of like leading off the sports and then it went into um, when I hit a freshman in high school and I met these kids from New York and New Jersey that were bringing these styles in from hip hop, that's when I was like, oh, wait, this is a whole nother thing, you know? Um, yeah. I didn't even have no idea about this. It was like the four elements of hip hop. It was breakdancing, emceeing, DJing, and graffiti. And, graffiti. Right. and, you know, I've always like loved music, so I've always been, you know, everyone does the freestyle, right? Um, I always like dancing. I, you know, I can spin on my head. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty savvy with the DJ thing. I could scratch, mix, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just cool things with that. And of course, I have the talent with art. So why, right. why was not graffiti art? You know what I mean? So I had um, came up with the name. When you first start out doing graffiti, just like even with the gang name that you try to come up, alias, aka. Yeah. You go through a lot of them, you know, so you'll, you'll end up getting the basic ones, you know, they're okay. sick or like, you know, yeah. what I mean, or something like that, you know. Um, but then eventually you just flow into something that's really not about the name. It's more about the lettering and the way that is. The way when, it looks. Yeah, and the way it looks. And my name always being Fernando or Fernando, you know, if you pronounce it <laughs> right. Yeah, that's and, a lot. Uh, yeah. kind of... And like, I never really liked that name at first because it was also my dad's name too. So I, I grew up as Junior. I'm and, Junior too. Oh shit! See, yeah, we have the yeah, same I'm person too. So yeah, I grew up, you know, liking Junior more. And when I got older, people wanted to start calling me my real name, and I was like, you I know. And then there's all the, there's all fur. And then, then they get it mixed up. It could be like Francisco or Frankie, or yeah. and then they chop down the whole name. It's like Fed or Nando or you know Fernie, and um, you know, it's just so many different names I have. But Fernando, I was kind of shy about it also because I'm light skinned Mexican. So people, some that's like the only thing that you could tell. Little Weddle, you know, what he thought. And some people, sometimes it was a good thing because it would like let people know, hey, this guy's Mexican, you know. And sometimes yeah. I'd be kind of shy because I'll like, wait, this guy don't look Mexican at all, you know. Yeah. 
Um, and also, so my mom and my brother and my sister's name, they all started with the M. It was Magdalena, Michael, Monica. And I was like, man, I wish my name was with the M, you know. And I literally um, felt like I was a menso. Menso in translation means starts off with stupid, but I don't use it like derogatory like that. It's just like using a Spanish household. Growing up as a kid, you know, you could be two, three years old and trip and fall. And your mom's like, I meant so right on a wall with the crayon. Your mom's like, I meant so get a bad grade. I meant so, you know, it, you could use it throughout life through anything. You forget your phone or lose your keys. I meant so, you know, or you might be doing a stupid decision. Just I meant so. And also the way I've carried myself, my whole family's comedians, you know, grandpa, and my dad, my mom, and my aunts, that we're all just jokesters and we're always just cracking jokes to make people laugh and I felt like I was the class clown at the time and the black sheep of the family so I just thought it was a perfect name but essentially it was the aesthetic of the of the M-E-N-S-O to paint it on the side of buildings and the side of uh, trains and um, you know you got to try to pick between three four no more than five letters so those were the ones there was a balance that I found in it and um, you know just like everyone likes to have an alter ego or um, you know that was my my Batman you know that was me yeah. in the middle of the night I feel like a ninja you know a stealth you know soldier in the middle of the night just creeping through with the backpack you know hearing the cars freeway go by the crispy air the three four in the morning the smell of the spray paint you know that all these rushes all together was uh, there was the, there's no um, there's no explaining it you know it's, I think it's um, it's amazing how much graffiti has come and how much it's thrive it's one of the biggest renaissance and um every single one of those artists those millions of artists no matter how they are whether they're 16 or pushing 60 is an og that they, they all feel this rush that's like you know it's like an underground culture and that's really like something i'm proud to have been a part of and uh you know and yeah i'm just i'm feeling blessed that i'm able to do yo, that for a living this is that yo man that joint right there look <laughs> All right, that's fine. First of all, I thank just want to let you, you know that, man. You. Pretty much, I was a young, the young cartoonist, yeah. and then went to the gangs, and yeah, then went, went to the BMX and skate, BMX, and then went to hip hop, yeah. and then the hip hop it transitioned to raves, the rave culture, the underground oh. rave culture. Because my homie, my good friend to this day, Mike, he and my other friend Mike picked me up one day, and they brought me to LA. And they took me to an underground um, show that was just all creatives that were at this joint. And, you know, this is where DJs and MCs and everyone got together. This is way before any kind of, um, you know, internet platform. There's no Instagram. There's no Facebook. There was no MySpace at this. Right. This was like our actual real community that was underground. It was, um, you know, such a beautiful thing. So the to crowd be. was created through word of mouth. Yeah, it was all word like of mouth to, and uh, underground. Yeah, you had to go the secret, you know, go to the liquor store, ask for a, a hard boiled egg, and they give you <laughs> another little, little you know, that <laughs> little like, treasure hunt just to get to the spot, literally. <laughs> yeah. And um, that's where um, I got into um, graffiti strictly, like full fledged, hundred percent. Like, okay, this is this is where I'm going to go because when you would travel to these shows in LA, the main objectives were objective was to get your name up as much as possible um you know along the way you know in the bathrooms at the at the truck stop or the gas station or along yeah. the freeway or on the building while you're in the downtown area you're just you're getting your name up you're leaving your little flag everywhere yeah and um you know you the goal is to become pretty much notorious and like known like oh yeah that's menso 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 because everyone in the building even though and no one people really wanna, like people want to kind of like know who you are yeah point, exactly right? exactly so they want to know who you are and you just like you end up it's a, it becomes addictive it's like an addiction now right and you just want more and more and more and you're addicted to fame and um you know a lot of the times the people even in this building don't even know who each other are but we know that the were that the people are present you know right, what i mean right. um you know what i mean we know that this guy that kills it is probably over there in the shadows we just don't know if it's him or not yeah. it has to come out natural where he you might catch him tagging or there's books a lot of like times like, yeah when yeah when he exactly. was Samo, and he just exactly. kept winding up Samo exactly and writing all these different quotes that right. were kind of edgy quotes that right. made people think or whatever and people right. never knew who he was until he did show up at one of those sessions and he just started blasting yeah, exactly. on his wall and they're like that same old yeah yeah you know and mm -hmm. that that's that's what i really like about it because it's a mysterious thing about it and people don't know 
who's doing the art, right. when they're doing it, how they're right. doing it. Every time when I see art, because I love street art, when I'm looking at the art, I'm like, yo, when did he do that? How right. did he do that? How does it work? Like, right. And I remember saying <clears throat> to my boy Pedro in high school, because he, he took me on my first, you know, little graffiti mission, you know, and, and it was it was it was kind of cool. That's why I'm kind of asking about how it was for you, where all right, first of all, we're out at a certain time that's, you know, at our age, we're already out later than we're probably supposed to be yeah. out. And we're in an area that we're not supposed to be. We got a backpack full of spray paint. Like, we're going to, if we get caught, we're caught. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like all about when you see the artist. And for me, it was seeing Pedro's get through all of these different steps. But then when he started doing the art, it's like, he just released like he didn't he wasn't thinking about anything else no more yeah he wasn't even yeah. worried no more i'm over here looking like yeah. i'm looking around i'm like but him he's a yeah going off yeah you know he's, I mean? he's in so his element like a, yeah, yeah yeah that's the best state of mind to be in you know that's like you're in pure bliss at that point yeah and delight you know what i mean like you're just in your element and it's just an amazing point to get to and reach you know if you can get to that point you're pretty much living the dream you know to yeah. um, for any anything that you do whatever your craft is or your, or your love is if you can get to that point where you know everything just goes away and all your yeah. problems and that's a that's a really really amazing you know state to be in for sure you think you think for you you know being an artist and do you think for cause, you know everybody has to find that thing for them that gives them that peace or gives them that um, escape, you know what I mean? And sometimes uh, we can use drugs and alcohol and all these other different things to do that. And then we know that that leads down a certain path. And then you have to find certain things that naturally give you that euphoria, euphoric yeah. or euphoria fit yeah. type, whatever it is, you know what I mean? So is that what it is for you when you're doing your art? Yes, I'm definitely, absolutely. I mean, if I could bottle it up, you know, I would definitely, you know, take a swig of it or whatever it might be to to experience that. Um, you know, it's just, it's uh, it's sometimes it's you know, it's like I call it magic. You know, magic. That's what a good way to describe it. You know, it's something you can't you can't describe. You know, yeah, it's like super, it's magic sometimes. You know, and if you could put it all together, um, it makes the perfect formula to. Um, you know, it's unexplainable, really. Yeah, I would say like. You know, um, yeah, I'm at loss of words to to describe the feeling of being you know having extreme passion for something and. You know, being able to pretty much, um, you know, project yourself and like have a transformation, you know, because yeah. it's almost like you're not the same person after like you do something amazing that you know and you could f accept it yourself because artists are always so hard and we criticize each mm -hmm. other for work. But when we have enough people, you That's know, same, whether it's two or three or a hundred, yeah, about it like and you. all from all different parts of the world say something and you're like oh man shoot i might have done something you know that could echo through eternity and that's the way that's the words that i live by you know i always know there's a a famous quote on a lot of your sh podcasts and shows but yeah if i could come up with one don't you dare <laughs> no which one is it because i got one already ready don't you dare. let me hear it go ahead no go ahead. i mean i was trying to think of one um, oh you know, no freestyle. not yet not yet i had not a yet. freestyle i had a freestyle you one, was going to come off the dome <laughs> i couldn't think of the right one right this right uh, now because all of the ones on your show have been too good like bro no nah, you can't I, talk I, I already, about, already you know? did my research i got one can't i got talk. a cold one ready for you man all right so all right, we still in high school at this point, man, you know? Yeah, so, so we're still in high school, so 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, I go into hip-hop culture, the mm -hmm. four elements, and in the rave culture, and um, that pretty much, like, whirlwinds, and it's, it, it spins a tornado into me graduating high school, and then I feel like, at that point, like, 
I wasn't a professional graffiti artist yet, but I've chosen the life to be a graffiti artist because whatever you're doing at like 19 to 21 is what you're going to be doing for not the rest of your life, but a good well, portion of it, you know? Yeah, if you're going to yeah. school, you're going to be going to more schooling. If you're going, if you already started to work, you're probably going to be a linesman for like, you know, whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's like what one of my, one of my dad's you know has always taught me like whatever you're doing at this stage is what you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life you know every time he tries yeah. to give you a lecture so yeah. i was like dude by the time i'm 25 i better be doing what i want to <laughs> be doing but yeah. 25 i'm like i'm accepted i'm a nomad at this point mm -hmm. you know i'm a vigilante man i'm like i'm i'm, I'm trying to go out and, and and leave my 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 stamp on the world my mark on the world i got to my goal is to conquer each city that's within you know my you know area reach, yeah. jurisdiction jurisdiction my reach yeah. my um to, to get my name bigger and badder you know in my head you know yeah. because i'm like the more times people could see me on the street corner my name dripping in black ink the more it adds to my street credibility you know what i mean people are gonna know that i was here so yeah. i walk through that town or i go through that underground little bar you know or, um, underground scene that yeah. little like, secret society yeah. of artists you know they're gonna be like oh yeah that guy's um, one of the big players right now yeah. he's, he's, he's made a name around here and we respect him for that and um you know that's all we had at that besides the shirt on our back you know is yeah. that respect um you know earned earned you a lot more than money you know that you felt rich from the the, the family and friends that you've had on on the street you know mm -hmm. through through these different um avenues and platforms that you put yourself in so i was a nomad i was just pretty much you know couch surfing living from city to city i would go down to san diego for a few months you know and drop my flag there go to the next city i'd be all the small cities in between you know and end up in riverside end up in orange county end up in la end up in san francisco you know now you're in las vegas and you're in utah you're in seattle you know, you're taking flights out to New York, New Jersey, like, you're, yeah, and you know, we all had all the different hustles back then, you know, and um, we had to make our money stretch because we were starving artists, literally, yeah. um, you know, we were living off of pretty much, just, you know, peanuts um, back then, it's been like an expensive cities too, Yeah. and you know, we were just worried about smoking blunts and drinking 40s on the rooftop and, you know, racking paint, you know, yeah. you know, we used to just come up on our materials, get enough to live by, you know, Pretty much booch off one of the girlfriends, you know, let her stay, stay, stay yeah, on her couch for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, you know. Like we, a rapper. It wasn't, it wasn't. Rapper like, yeah, like the yeah. same way. I yeah. didn't yeah. <laughs> Give me a little studio yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple bars off. Yeah. And just see where it go. Like, and that's, I mean, yeah. you know, you can look at it in any profession where somebody's right. really passionate about what they're doing. They don't start off with much, you know, and they right. make the most out of what they have. So when they do get the proper resources, you know what to expect as far as, you know, greatness, because it's going to be, yeah. you know, 10 steps ahead.